servicing of EVs. It's a whole new world. Let's see what that looks like. Here at the Hendy Servicing Centre, the switch to EV servicing has been a major change. Pete has offered to show us what a service involves and give us some useful tips. So this is an EV servicing workshop. Yes, this is a specific area which specialises in EV repairs. Okay, what's the difference? <laughs> well, we need different equipment. That's going to be the first difference. Um, obviously, EV vehicles and the new technology that's on them, we need a, a vast array of different specialised equipment, particularly when working around the battery. Um, obviously, this vehicle behind us has got a battery which forms the floor pan of the vehicle almost in its entirety. Usually, you know, you get to service time with your car, and especially if it's an old one, you've had it for a long time and it's not too complicated, there's lots of things that you can do for yourself to save money on servicing. Is that the same for EVs? There are, there are definitely things on an EV vehicle that are the same as a traditional internal combustion engine. Things like the, the brakes, the tyres, the wheels, the suspension generally is classically the same. But of course, it doesn't have an engine and it doesn't have a powertrain in the same way. So it doesn't have drive shafts, it doesn't have a gearbox, obviously it doesn't have an engine, doesn't have all the drive belts and everything that goes with that, it doesn't have spark plugs, it doesn't have an air filter because it's not taking air into the engine. And clearly on this particular type of vehicle, the components and software is a crucial part of how the vehicle operates. So we get software, I mean, I get it. On the Mackie, I get some, you know, do you want to update software? Is that just happening all the time anyway? Yes, yeah, so, so there's a range of software that will just update um, and it's known as software over the air. And it's most manufacturers now are starting to do, um, to have the vehicle whereby it's capable outside your house of connecting to your Wi-Fi, and it will download some of the simple software updates. Sometimes it's absolutely crucial that the crucial types of software go in via a hardwired connection, and that would be through a computer that we'd have within the workshop. So you can only get some of the software that you really need when you're servicing? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, particularly the, the, the major upgrades or the upgrades to how the vehicle functions, that will only come through a service operation and, and, and a diagnostic computer. So this iPACE is about to have its first service. It's a minor service, which includes testing the 12 volt battery, checking of the seat belts and the safety equipment, replacements of the brake fluid. The brake fluid is hydroscopic and is exactly the same as a standard combustion engine vehicle. Thorough visual inspection of the vehicle on the underside, including the tyres and the brakes. And the all important diagnostic check and software update. And I would be nervous. I mean, I used to tinker around with my old Mini all the time because there's any number of, in those days, you know, Haynes Manual, there wasn't even the internet in those days, but, you know, there's any number of ways you can learn about a regular ICE mechanical engine. I wouldn't feel as confident because of the electrical factor. Is that right, you know, that we need to be a bit more careful with these? Yeah, you're absolutely right too. We've, we've worked with um, internal combustion engines for, 50, 60, 70 years. And a lot, of, a lot of the people out in the public space have got some experience of it and they've, they've probably had a, a go at doing something themselves. Some of those operations are really quite straightforward. Um, some are more complicated and depending on your level of skill. This particular vehicle represents a risk and it represents a risk because it has a high voltage circuit. So whilst some of the operations are very simple to do, such as the brakes we talked about, um, actually, there's a real caution to how far you go into the vehicle and what you do if you're not skilled enough to know what you can and can't touch. From your perspective as the services, have you had to retrain staff, re-equip workshops? You know, what's it been like from your perspective? Um, it's, been a, it's been a high level of investment. Um, we're, we're obviously linked to our manufacturer partners. Um, they have training programmes in order to upskill our current technicians. Most of the technicians are used to working on ICE vehicles and highly skilled in that. Because this is a completely different vehicle, because it's a completely different infrastructure in terms of how the vehicle works, they're now being trained how to operate and how to, uh, how to work on an electric vehicle. So we're we talking about a few hours? Days, days and days. Uh, depending on what level the technician wants to get to, um, there are different levels of skill. The risk with electrics on an ICE vehicle is 12 volts maximum. Um, it's significantly more than that on a high voltage vehicle. Yeah. 
Obviously, tyres are tyres, but they're not the same, are they, on an electric vehicle as they are on an ICE vehicle, necessarily? No, generally not. No, generally, whilst, whilst a standard tyre would fit to the wheel, and you might go away from that thinking that standard tyre is absolutely perfectly fine, probably wouldn't notice the difference necessarily. Generally, most of the manufacturers do have a specific electric vehicle tyre, and that might be that it, it copes with heavier load, different weight of the vehicle, how the torque reacts, because obviously there is a much more low down torque on an electric vehicle. Is servicing the brakes the same on an EV? The brake system itself is, is probably almost identical. Um, it works in the same sort of way. Obviously what happens with an EV vehicle, because we've got regenerative braking, um, we generally don't use them. Um, and particularly some of the vehicles that rely on very serious regenerative braking, such as one pedal, um, actually the, the reality is you could probably do a 100 mile trip without touching your brakes. But of course the risk in that is if the brakes aren't moving, as with anything that doesn't move, it has a potential to seize up. So we'd recommend as a driver that you do make sure you are using the brakes periodically, either through turning off the regenerative system and then using the brakes and relying on them fully, or just consciously making, the, making sure that you're using the brakes regularly. And what can I do to help my EV then? Because if I can't tinker around under the bonnet, and I don't want to because I'm fully aware of those risks, are there things that I can do, like in the way that I drive or in the way that I use the vehicle, that might help when it comes to its long life, its less need to service, those things. I think the two crucial things as a driver, I would say, is make sure you keep the software up to date. I think that's the, the vehicle runs on software, um, as most of the, the modern product does, um, but it's particularly crucial on an electric vehicle. So keep the software up to date, whether that be over the air, getting updates from your Wi-Fi network at home, or whether it be through your routine servicing. Um, but secondary to that, one of the things that's um, quite crucial is conditioning. Uh, battery well, conditioning. I, I don't even know what conditioning is. Uh, battery conditioning, if I could describe it as, as basically as I can, is basically waking the, vehicle, waking the vehicle battery up and getting it ready before you start to drive. Is that a case of yelling out the front door or what is that? Most manufacturers will have some guidance about how to con condition the battery, um, but we, we normally see, if I gave you a, a sweeping statement, it'd be for five minutes or something like that, that you'd have the vehicle on, usually still plugged into its charge, and what that would be doing is that would be getting the battery woken up. Quite often we can do it from our app, we do it a lot when it's cold. I know I can do that from my app, yeah. We, we want the vehicle to be warm, so we do it a lot in the winter because we switch on the vehicle from our front room and we like it to be nice and warm we'll get in five minutes later. It's also really crucial actually when it's warm, this five minute period of the vehicle waking up and the battery getting ready to go can extend your range and it's also very good for the battery itself. That's really good to know. That's really useful information. So before, and do I need to do it every time, like before I'm going out? No, it's a, it's a good practice to do. Um, I describe it much the same as if you, in the olden days when you wanted to, before you started racing your car up the motorway, you would let it warm up and get the oil warmed up. It's not dissimilar to that. It's a good practice to do. So it's commonly said, don't take it to the dealer because that's immediately going to cost you more and is unnecessary. It has definitely changed. The price of servicing will be different than we experienced on combustion engines. What I would say about taking it to the dealer is this is really new technology. Um, we've dealt with combustion engines for such a period of time. And what you want to be assured of is that the, the, the people that are working on the vehicle have the highest level of skill for this new technology. So is it cheaper? I mean, does it take less time uh, to service an EV than it does with normal ones? Yes, from a standard service perspective, or a minor service as some of the manufacturers might refer it to. The routine one where the vehicle comes in possibly annually or every two years, it's likely to be a cheaper service. And the reason why is obviously there isn't any oil in the service and there's probably a little bit less content because we're not doing operations in and around the engine. So the time is likely to be shorter and the price is likely to be cheaper. Uh, so show me like, what, what's different, what have we got? Okay, so this is a specialist electric vehicle bay. So first of all, that's different is the ramp. This in-ground ramp is designed specifically for lifting electric vehicles. These particular devices are used because they lift the vehicle on a one-inch platform under here. So, the, so the, literally that is the only bit touching the vehicle. That's right. Got nothing in the middle. That's right. It's picking the vehicle up from the sill with a very, very fine clearance. And the reason why is the battery is such a width and forms the basis of the floor 
that if you picked it up with the standard lift, you wouldn't be able to get the battery out. Can you? Can we get under and see the battery? Of course, I'll show you. Okay. This, um, this silver panel that looks like the floor is indeed the battery casing. So as you can see, it forms the basis of the entire underside of the vehicle. Wow. So it's also a lot of the strength of the vehicle as well. It's formed by the battery. So how do you, how do you get to work on the battery? Uh, well, obviously you can work around the battery. So the first thing is obviously if you had a level two technician, they can work on and around the battery, not inside it. They'll also be qualified to take the battery unit out. There's lots of technology above the battery, obviously. Um, so they would be able to withdraw the battery in order to work on the components that are behind the battery unit. If we actually wanted to work inside the battery unit, that's our top level technician. And that what they would do is they would take the battery unit out. They would use a lift, a very expensive hoist, a special battery one? One just like that. So the hoist that is uh, positioned over there is, um, is, is a specific battery lifting table. Um, it can lift 1,400 kilograms, which is around about the weight of three polar bears. Um, and obviously it, uh, it comes with a price tag of only 10,000 pounds. Oh, 10,000 pounds. And that's just one piece of equipment that just you need? Just one piece of equipment. So what else is different in this workshop then? Okay, well, another couple of pieces of key equipment is we have the electric vehicle charge station and that is obviously for charging the battery after we might have done any repairs on it. And of course, crucially, we have a defibrillator. And that's an indication really of the risk that exists when you are working on electric vehicles. All of our sensors have got defibrillators in them. And that's new? And that is new. Hold on a minute, what's this? So this is an insulated hook. So it's a what? It's an insulated hook. So this, uh, this particular device is insulated for a thousand volts yeah. and it is designed for one technician to stand by while another technician is working on the electric vehicle. And should, should an incident occur, they can hook the person back from the vehicle. What, like that? Yes, Just similar to that. <laughs> So a ton of information, but if you just take away one piece of information from this film, it's that it's vital that you know exactly what the service requirements are for your EV.